Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Awesome. This is a beautiful, glorious morning. Yes. I pray and hope that y'all woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul. I am still in San Antonio. (laughs) Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. So this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Isaiah 63 and 64 this morning. And then we're in Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 1 through 23. Amen. So how are y'all doing? I'm going to tell you, the difference in the climax between Dallas and San Antonio, it doesn't even feel like it's Saturday morning. Like, I feel like I've had my Saturday already, but it doesn't feel like Saturday morning. So... Um, I, I I feel a little like, I guess, jet lag, even though I didn't fly a plane. <laughs> Amen. All right. So are we ready to be conquerors, to conquer this day and be victorious in it? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we just come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we glorify you and we thank you, Lord God. For waking us up this morning, getting us on our way, and just ordering our steps, Lord God, and and making plans and, and, and purposing us for your kingdom, Lord God. And we pray that you are the teacher, that you are the preacher, you're the counselor. We pray that you are everything that we need to be able to labor in the Lord, Lord God. And we just thank you and glorify you for your healing. We thank you for your healing power, your healing spirit, and that you are moving on our behalf and making ways out of no way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. And I pray for everyone that watches this live video and everyone that comes back and watch the replay, Lord God. I pray that you are still fixing and working out their circumstances, their situations, that you're still giving them the energy and the strength, Lord God, to be able to continue to walk in confidence of you, Lord Jesus. And I just glorify you and I thank you, Lord, that you are making us bold in you and standing firm in the word, Lord God, and that you are growing us, keeping us healthy, and that you are increasing our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of you, of the word, of everything. And we just glorify you and we praise you. We give you all honor. And we pray this in the presence of Jehovah, the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. All right. We are in Isaiah. 
Isaiah 63. Now, you know, there's cars behind me. Uh, the people are up this morning over here. And there's a main road. So I hope you can hear me. I hope I'm talking loud enough. Um, because the vehicles are very loud. All right. Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. All right. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my ram ramment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered, and that there, that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Okay, so my commentary for verses 1 through 6 says this passage is similar to chapter 59, 15b through 20. Both passages describe God as a warrior going to battle to defeat the forces of evil. It says the verse opens with a question from the watchman and God responds. The warrior God was was waged has waged war and is returning victorious perhaps edom with its capital city of basra is representative representative of all the nations that had exploited god's people through the years okay the image of trampling the enemy underfoot like a winemaker tramples on grapes is picked up by the book of Revelation to describe Jesus as warrior at the final battle. All right. So sometimes, you know, I got to read the commentary so I can even uh, understand a little bit more of what I'm reading. I don't always get it right away. <laughs> Amen. All right, so Isaiah 63, verse 7. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he said, surely they are my people, children, they will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led him by the right hand of Moses 
with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness they, that they should not stumble. As a beast goeth down into the valley, the spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So did thou lead the, thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Good morning. Good morning. If you're just coming on, good morning. We are in Isaiah 63 and we are at verse 15. It says, look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? The sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies toward me. Are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father. Through Abraham be ignorant of us and Israel acknowledge us not. Though our Lord art our father, our redeemer, thy name is from everlasting. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from the ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servants sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of thy holiness have possessed it, but a little while our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. All right, so uh, my commentary uh, says for verses 7 through 9, says Isaiah took the distance past of Israel, Israel's history and remembered God's mercies and loving kindness. These verses speak in general terms of God's praiseworthy acts and Israel's affliction. The later focus on the crossing of the sea leads to the conclusion that even here the prophet alluded to Israel's bondage in Egypt and God's rescue. The angel of his presence alludes to the angel's role at the time of the Red Sea crossing. Uh, for verses 11 through 14, it says God's grace was not eradicated in spite of Israel's rebellion. These verses contemplate a second exodus where God will again deliver his people from their oppressors. Amen. See, for verse 16, it says the appeal is made to God as a son makes an appeal to his father. God's fatherhood supersedes even that of father Abraham, as well as his grandson, Jacob, Israel, who gave his name to his descendants. So, again, we just we pretty much we're just seeing the grace and mercy of God, you know, even though even though the people of God. Uh, the Israels um, from the time of Moses and the Israels, um, even though they rebelled, they turned their back on him. They 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 made graven images. They they did all kinds of things that were displeasing to the Lord. He he's he's showing his loving mercy and kindness. And, and letting them know, I'm, I'm going to save you. You know, I am going to save you. And, and, and you, you have an everlasting covenant, you know, with me. You know, the Lord God is saying, I get angry. I punish. I discipline. I do all that. But I will save um, Israel. I will save the house of Jacob. I will save Jerusalem, you know. He's saying, he, you know, we're just being reminded of the mercy that God is, the merciful God that he is. Amen. So make sure you make comments. Don't let me be the only one talking. Uh, say what's in your spirit. All right. So let's move on to Isaiah 64. All 
All right, Isaiah 64, if you're just coming on, good morning. It says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down the mountains, flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, Neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee. What had what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him? Thou meetest him that rejoices and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned in those in those is continuance. And we shall be saved. But we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us. And has consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay and thou our potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth very sore, O Lord. Neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee. We are all thy people. Thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us, very sore. So for verses five through seven, my commentary says Isaiah also confessed sin on behalf of the community, thus justifying God's judgment against them. Filthy rags means clothes stained by menstrual blood. And thus rendered ritually unclean. Wow. I always thought when it said filthy rags, it just meant, you know, dirty, you know, just uh, just dirty and unclean. I would have never taken it as far as, you know, um, stained by menstrual blood I wouldn't have never <laughs> I would have never went there with that um uh, for verse 8 it says Isaiah appealed to God as their father only rarely and in extreme cases will a human father disown a delinquent child the prophet also appealed to God as their creator using the image of the potter and his clay so, you know, sometimes there has to be somebody that'll stand up before God, you know, sometimes there has to be someone that'll stand up before the Lord and say, listen, together as a whole, we have all sinned. We have all sinned. We have all um, together as a whole, you know, we we have displeased you, Lord. Forgive us of our iniquities, you know, and, and prayer warriors, you know, we have to, we have to be the ones to stand up in that gap and, and stand before the Lord for the people, for all people of God 
And that's that means across the globe. We're praying for people of God that we have no clue of or who they are, but we know that they exist. We know that they're in Russia, they're in China, they're in Africa, they're in Europe, you know, and we, we got to stand up in the gap for, for all of all the people of God, the whole body of Christ, because we are learning that we are one body, one mind. And so there, there has to be a time where, where prayer warriors, prophets have to stand up in that gap for everyone and and just and just really pray and ask God to forgive us of our sins forgive us of our iniquities you know as a whole you know and and we got to we got to be ready to be the, that one we got to be ready to be that one that will do it that will stand up before God and say will you forget for, just forgive us lord we 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 repent of our iniquities and then you got to pray that the people of God will repent, you know, across the globe, that the people of God will own up to their sinful ways and open their eyes and open their ears. So you got to pray that, you know, for everybody, that everybody as a whole will open their eyes, will open their ears and hear the voice of the Lord. And become very obedient to the Lord God Almighty. You know, that's why we got to pray for our president. We have to pray for city officials. We have to pray for our governors and and those who are in in the government arena. Um, We have to pray for our teachers and our preachers and our pastors. We have to pray. We have to pray all those that claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, and just and stand in that gap for them, you know, because the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. There are so many believers across the globe, but the flesh is weak. And so those of us, uh, those of us that are strong, those of us that are walking in righteousness, in the light, we got to pray and stand in that gap and call the people of God. And, and, and pray and say, Lord, lead them out of darkness, lead them out of the darkness and let them see the light. Let them open their let them be able to open their eyes and in and, and their ears. And, and we pray as a whole, because as a whole, as long as they continue to sin, as long as they continue to uh, uh, disobey the Lord as a whole body. We are disobeying the Lord as a whole body. So you have to continue to pray, to pray for the people that we put in in rule above us, to pray for the people, our bosses, our, our, our co-workers, everybody that claims the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we pray and we stand in that gap. That is part of laboring in the Lord. To labor in the Lord, we, we, we make sure we use our voice in prayer and stand in that gap. And if there's two or three, like the Lord said, when there's two or three gathered together, he's right there in the midst. You know, and so we can pray for a nation. We can pray for nations. We can pray for all the people of God, just two or three of us. That's all it takes, you know, that's all it takes. And we can move mountains because we have the seed, the mustard seed of faith, you know, so we can move mountains. We can move situations. We can work things out by praying together and and praying for the people of God. And, and, and like we, we, we're learning that, We'll we'll see the evidence. We'll see the evidence by the reaction of the earth, because when God comes, because when we pray and, and we 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 bring down the presence of the Holy Spirit, we bring down the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Then the earth begins to react and we know God is on the scene. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
<laughs> God is on the scene, right? All right, so good morning. If you are just coming on, we just read Isaiah 63 and 64. And so now we are in Colossians. Colossians 1. One, verses 1 through 23. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So good morning. Good morning. All right. Colossians. So, of course, we're still hearing from Paul. Says Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the way he greets, you know, in his letters. I love the way he greets um, the people. Says we give thanks to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth as ye also learned of ep phrase our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of Christ who is declared unto us your love in the spirit for this cause we also since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We, we just talked about this, right? <laughs> we just talked about this. It's like the Holy Spirit, you know, reading what we read in Isaiah and leading into what Paul, what we're getting ready to read um, in Paul with, with, you know, Paul, what Paul is saying um, to the church in Colossae, the, to the Colossians, you know, we got to pray for one another. We got to, we got to check up on one another and we got to stand in the gap and pray for one another always, you know, so we just got through saying this. All right. So verse 10, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, sins. So. It's like Paul is just confirming what the Holy Spirit just spoke through me almost. It's like, you know, the word, the word is an on time word, you know, it for the right now, you know, and we have to continue to pray, you know, for one another. I know that we, 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 we have desires and we have wants, but we should want the people of God to be saved. We should want the people of God to get it right. 
to want to do it right. We should want to be a unity. You got to remember those times where family get together. You know how family get together and we have a good time and we laugh and things like that. That we, we should want that for the whole body of Christ, for all people of God. We should want to be able to, you know, go to different places and travel. And we have we have family of God, you know, wherever we go and we can come together, pray, praise, worship the Lord and and all iniquity and all sins are forgiven and 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 actually see the people of God walk in light and no longer in darkness. These are these are things that we should want and pray for, you know. All right, so we are in Colossians 1 verse 15. Says who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Ooh, excuse me, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it is ple- it, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In this, in the body of his flesh through death to, pre- to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Glory, glory, glory. So Paul once again reminds us how everything Everything was made by God. For us, he's an invisible God. He's created visible things, invisible things. He's created principalities, powers, dominions. He's created thrones. He's created all things for him. For him. Amen. And then he reminds us again how Jesus Christ came, died on the cross and rose again for us to be fulfilled in all of this. For us to be, you know, grounded and settled and not moved in the Lord. For us to receive salvation and things like that. So he wants our bodies to be unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. He wants to be able to come and embrace us and look at us and say, well done and pat us on the back and, and, and take us in and love on us. And, and, and we live with him in eternity. Amen. So we, 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 we want to thank the Lord God for people like Paul. And we want to follow after his example. Because Paul Paul is following after the, the example of Jesus Christ in every way. Like Paul was not a, a, a deci- Paul was not an apostle who actually walked with Jesus Christ. 
but yet he follows his example in every way. It's like the Lord took Paul and really poured his essence and revelation and insight and everything that Paul would need to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know? So we want to walk in those examples. We want to walk in light and come completely from darkness and want to be able to teach and preach the truth of the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we love the people of God. So therefore, we want them to know the truth. We want to be truth. We want to be the light. Just like he's, we want to be what God said we are. He said, we are the light. We are the salt of the earth. He said, we, we, he called us that. We are cities on a hill. He said, we are cities on a hill, meaning he done placed us on a platform for us to be seen because you can see a city on the hill. And when we let our light shine, it, when the city is on a hill and, and, and they light the candles, you can see everybody from afar can see the light in, in that city that's lit up with light that's sitting on a hill. So we are placed on platforms to be seen. And so we have to be representatives of God. And we have to follow after these examples, after the examples of Jesus Christ, after the examples of Paul, people who came before us, who have embarked and brought the kingdom of heaven on earth. You know, we, we, we got to be that. And so we have to, we have to start with prayer, start with prayer, start with praise. You know, if, if you say, if you, if you're somebody that say, well, I really don't know how to go out there and, and win souls for Jesus. I really don't know how to do that. LaShonda. I really don't know how to go out there and preach the word and things like that. You know, then pray, start with prayer. Start with praise. Start with 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 worship. Do what it is you know to do. Start with that. And the Lord will lead you and guide you and cultivate you and mold you and build you to be able to break down and, and, and say and having the peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, where you'll be able to pick up the Bible and just be able to preach it and, and, and teach it. You know, because no matter what, who is the real teacher here? The Holy Spirit. All he's doing is using you. He's you. All you got to do is take the step, move forward and say, Lord, you can use me. You can use my mouth. You can use my eyes, my ears. You can use my hands to go out and be the light and be the salt and be that city on a hill, be that called one that you have called me to be. You can use me, Lord Jesus, and don't put him in a box. Don't tell him what he can and cannot do with you. Let him do what he does. Amen. <laughs> Beverly says, all right, now. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Patricia says, amen. Yes. You know, let, let's, let's continue. Let's continue in this every single day and, and, and wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the globe, take in that boldness, take in that boldness and, and, and stand firm and take in that confidence in the Lord Jesus and stand firm in his word and realize who he has made you to be. And know that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to have doubt. No anxieties. 
No worries. And do not faint. Be strong in the Lord. You know, don't faint. Don't weary. You know, no matter what circumstances, situation, if your environment changes, if your situation changes, if your circumstances changes, none of that should distract you. You know, I'm out here uh, on a small little vacation with my family and things like that. But that's not going to stop me. Oh, no, no. God comes first. No matter what, I don't care if I end up in the Bahamas on a beach somewhere, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue what it is that I am called to do. You know, I'm going to always come because I'm, I'm not just here for me. I'm not just here for me. I'm here for the people of God, you know, and, and that's how we all should be. No matter where you go, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your circumstances is, you should always make it be about God and laboring in the Lord. You know, you can be on vacation and labor in the Lord. Amen. You, 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 you can be uh, out there fighting fires if you're a firefighter, being a police officer or in the government or wherever you are. You can be that and labor in the Lord. Make it about God wherever you go. Make it about the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's who you're here for. You know, that's who that's who we are all here for. And that's for the Lord. It says. For by him were all things created. That are in heaven. And that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist. So. We couldn't operate without him anyway. We couldn't take vacations without him anyway. We couldn't do anything that we are doing. I couldn't do this right here without him. Even, even, if, you, even if you see false prophets and false teachers out there preaching and teaching, we even learn how Paul says, guess what? Guess who they preaching and teaching anyway? We are to be made aware that there are false prophets and false teachers. Like all things are made by him for him. No matter what. It's all for his glory. For all for his his presence to be made known, you know, on this planet, on this earth for him. He did it for him. You know, Hamilton says, thank you, Lord. <laughs> we got to glory. We got to glorify. And we're going to do it together. We're going to do this together. Praise God. Yes. Amen. So, yes. Good morning. If you are just coming on, this is the reading of the word. Um, we just read Isaiah 63 and 64 and then Colossians uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 23 so go back and read those again um, it, the increase of the learning and the increase of knowledge and wisdom and understanding is just just awesome and amazing and, and it does give you confidence you know staying in the word every single day it does give you confidence and it, it rebuilds you and gives you the energy and the strength that you need to be able to continue. But it also makes you go back and, and see things from a different perspective and, and hear things in a different way. You know, that, that way, that way we can get it right, you know. So continue to come on every morning with me. We're here at 530 every morning reading the words of God. We are getting through this Bible in one entire year. 
We started November 1st. We are at August 1st. Look at that, man. That time has actually gone by pretty fast. November 1st, we are at August 1st. So that September, October, November, we will have read the entire Bible. Like every word of it. Amen. That is going to be awesome. And 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 that I I'm learning a lot. I am I am learning a lot of things that, you know, even though that that word was in me, there's there's a lot more things that I am really learning and growing. And I pray that you are, too. I pray that there's a lot of things that um, the knowledge, the wisdom and the understanding are being increased in you, you know, as as we continue to stay in the word every single day. So I look forward to actually accomplishing this goal and I look forward to seeing what God is doing in our lives, you know, and and, and we're going to start with today, you know, let's be conquerors, walk victoriously in this day. You see, you see how that sun, look at that beautiful, beautiful sky behind me, how it's just, you know, the, the changing of the colors as the sun is getting ready to uh, rise like how it was a, a dark, dark black blue. And now the blue, the lighting of the blue, it has lightened up behind me. That is just so beautiful. <laughs> I had to stop and recognize that and acknowledge that. But that is awesome. Ooh. And of course, we have our our bugs <laughs> out here. Anyways, how much is it helps helps build a better, better relationship with the Holy Spirit intimacy? Yes, staying in the word is is very powerful in itself and it creates an obedience in us. You know, it creates an obedience and, and, and a willing spirit to want to obey the Lord, you know, to want to listen to him. And want to hear his voice and hear what he has to say. Amen. But yes, as the sun is coming up, so are the bugs. So I'm getting off. <laughs> Me and bugs don't, we don't, I don't have unity with bugs. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> Amen. So you're going to see me swatting and, 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 and doing a lot of this, you know. Um, cause one just flew and attacked my ear. So yeah. And, and they're, they're, they're coming out now. All right. So I love you all y'all. Uh, I mean, y'all are so beautiful. I love you all. And, um, I really pray and hope that y'all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you five 30 in the morning.